Get connected with Take Two Radio Music on Facebook or Twitter at Take Two Radio Music. Or for email updates on future shows, follow at Blog Talk Radio. For previous episodes, upcoming guests, and more, visit Take Two Radio Music.com. And good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Take Two Radio Music. This is Pam, your host. And I know, like I've said before, I should be saying DJ since it's a music show, but with having to do my other shows, I always say host, and I've gotten into that habit. And it just sounds funny to me, DJ Pam. And I'm, I apologize to any other DJ Pams that are out there in the world, but it just sounds funny for me to say that. So, um, yeah, we'll stick with host, and you guys know what I mean. And I, I play the music, and I interview the bands, and that's all that matters. So, And speaking of that, um, today I'll be chatting to the indie rock band from the U.K., and let me say this, too, because it's hard to say it without the the. The name of the band is Richmond Band, but I'll be speaking to the members of the Richmond Band because I had somebody point out to me that it's not the Richmond Band, it's Richmond Band. But you can't say it without putting the the in front of it. Do you know what I mean? Yes, today is going to be a crazy show. Anyways, joining me from the band will be Paul, Peter, and Rob. And I do believe that I have them live now. Can you guys hear me? Hello? Can you hear us okay? Ah, there you are. Yes. Hey. yes. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> Think I'm crazy. Can you tell by my intro? Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> yes, it was it was very good. It's, it, but you pronounced Richmond Band much better than the Richmond Band. Yeah. Where we uh, we like that. Yeah, I mean it's just so hard to say that though. You can't because it sounds like you're missing, um, you know, a word when you're saying today I'm going to be speaking to Richmond Band. Kind of sounds funny. <laughs> but if you say if you say today I'll be speaking to the Richmond Band, then that sounds speak- better. That's because you speak so well. Yeah, you speak my, obviously better than we do. <laughs> <laughs> you guys had to make it hard for me. You know, I, I try to speak proper English when I can, but, you know, you just made it hard for me. So I've been fighting my inner self. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't mention the English thing. We've got a Scotsman here. <laughs> yeah. He feels very left out. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I, but I don't speak Scottish. <laughs> oh, go on, Pam. I'm sorry, Pam. it's going to be murder. We, in, <laughs> we, we, insist, we insist that you give us a little bit of a Scottish accent to carry on. Right? Oh, my gosh, no way. Well, I cannot do accents to save my life. I have a good friend that lives in North Carolina, so she has a very strong southern accent. And every time I try to, you know, pull that accent out on her because I make fun of her every once in a while with the way she'll say something, she's like, you're not even close. <laughs> so I totally give up on accents. I'll just listen okay. to them. Don't ask me to say them because you'll just be laughing from today till tomorrow. Well, we have a lot of people in Scotland listening, mm-hmm. and uh, I think they'd feel offended if you didn't at least try it. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh-huh. we we were like, Rob's going to say something, and we'd like you to repeat it. The Come on, word. please, please, for us. It's going to be murder. It's going to be what? It, it's going to be murder. Murder. It's going to be, be mugged us? Ah, ah, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I don't, even, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> Did I just swear in Scottish or something? Yeah, yeah, did, yeah, yeah. <laughs> murder. It's going to be murder, but uh, it's going to be murder. Oh, it's going to be murder. Okay. <laughs> that, now I get it. See, that's why I have a problem. Although I am totally in love with accents, and especially out there by the UK, um, I have a problem sometimes speaking to somebody from there, it, depending on how rich their accent is. And, you know, Mel, of course, my good friend Mel from Aspire Music Management, and she has managing, you know, bands from out there. I always have to ask her, am I going to be able to understand them? (laughs) I think you'll be okay. We we translate for Rob all the time. Yeah. It'd be good. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, okay, well, um, good. And I'm glad I'm not the only one. So <laughs> how are you guys doing tonight? Yeah, we're, we're good. We're really right, yeah. excited. And, uh, yeah, we, we're really pleased to be on your show. And we'd like to say hello to Mel as well, just say thank you very much for everything she's done so far. Yeah, she's a good girl. She does her work very well, I have to say that. <laughs> I'm not so sure she's a good girl, but, yeah, she's definitely uh, definitely good at uh, helping us. Ooh. <laughs> you know something about Mel that I don't? I know her, what, eight years now? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe some secrets will be spilling on this show. So, ooh, ooh. okay. Um, well, let's let's go ahead and get started. I mean, um, I read Paul that you come from a very musical family. So, do mm-hmm. you think that if you hadn't been surrounded by music growing up, that you would still have wanted to be in a band? Um, that's a good question. I I, I do because um, my closest friends um all crazy into music and uh i'd say bon jovi Aerosmith, um sort guns, of and roses. guns and roses kind of that ilk so we all oh, we all we, we all just drove a lot and listened to a lot of music and uh i think i think i would have always been into it because of them primarily but it did help with my parents playing and singing and my sister being an extremely good singer as well and writer so yeah i, I think i think i still would have been in it definitely did you have any interest in, you know, playing a musical instrument at that time, or did you start that later? Um, I started it later. Actually, my, my first musical instrument was a mouth organ. And, uh, <laughs> oh, harmonica. <laughs> harmonica, <laughs> sorry, harmonica. Still learning it now. I used, to, yeah. but I, used to, I used to play songs and, uh, and used to do mouth organ solos. To like just randomly put them in places that made them sound terrible, but just that's that's the only. That's if you had the right mouth organ. Yeah, yeah, but key. it had to be. I only had one mouth organ, so it had to be the songs with the right key. But uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that that was my first interest. But my my dad used to play guitar a lot around the uh, around the house when I was young, so that was an interest as well. But um, yeah, we could Peter, uh, excellent guitarist, and Rob kind of made me a bit lazy, but. Um, yeah, I think singing was my forte, so it's best to stick with that, really. Yeah, he's been nice about that's your forte. Yeah. <laughs> the guitar, the guitar seems, is, is a good songwriter on the guitar, but as a lead guy. <laughs> uh, but, uh, well, you uh, you guys got together rather young, so did you start out doing original music, or did you do cover songs? How did you start? Um, you know, you well, we were, yeah, we were pretty, you know, we, we met in school. We kind of hated each other for, like, a week and then we loved each other for the rest of our lives basically you know it was um as soon as we bonded it was all based around music and just you know growing up that way and kind of all the songs and bands we listened to from brucey to bon jovi we kind of lived those songs so you know as soon as we could play a couple of calls a bit like nirvana we started writing our own songs you know, yeah what they may not be very good and they're about yeah. 10 minutes long but yeah. we yeah. did <laughs> we'd always we'd always gig with we're doing probably one cover yeah, um, yeah. Maybe no, no, just one really. Whenever we we'd always just throw in one. We were yeah. primarily just about this leave. This we're going to do our stuff. Animal and uh, we used to do. We used yeah, to do yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we've done Britney Spears before. Sorry, we've covered Britney Spears before. Um, <laughs> uh-huh. Neil, <laughs> Neil Young, um, yeah, Lana Set. So we've yeah. yeah, those 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 kinds of music. We, we yeah. We do it on tape, on version of them, bit, wouldn't we? Yes, yeah. But, um, but we, we picked it up. We were about writing straight away. We, I think we had yeah. a... Well, we were writing songs before we could play. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I was, I was writing tons of lyrics and mm. I've still got loads of just... And then adding melodies to them and, yeah. I mean, I used to I used to love buying albums and before putting them on, reading the lyrics and trying to work out what the melody line is going to be before I actually put it on. Um, which is that. showing you how sad I was when I was growing up. Uh. <laughs> I did, I was quite fun as well at times. Formats of songs and like yeah. uh, intro, the verse, the chorus, and figure out, oh yeah, and then you kind of I want to write stuff like that. Yeah, that's, that's, mm. that's what I used to do. Yeah, yeah, I kind of missed the whole lyric thing, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just got out onto the guitar. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Rob, as long as he's cranked up loud, it doesn't really yeah, matter yeah. what the lyrics say. Like. <laughs> Well, I, you know, how do, how do you write a song without playing an instrument? I always wondered about that. I mean, do you just kind of like 
write a poetry type or poem type, you know, song, and then you find somebody that plays the instrument and you put it all together? Sometimes you would, Paul, would you come up with lyrics, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah I'd, I, would, I would. I mean, it, um, there's one song, I think you, you might actually play it tonight, called Needle. Um, that was, I wrote it at a desk when I was at work, and that was, um, that was the uh, lyrics the vibe of it and, and basically the melody as well so you, you'd have a you'd have a feeling and the feeling would translate into a rhythm and that rhythm would then add you'd had lyrics to that so the emotion would go with the rhythm um, and then I got around to Rob's and he was uh, he was just playing around with the acoustic and said I'll come up with this really cool little lick and little thing and literally he just played what he played and was working and I sung what I'd written that day and uh, and, and it went and mm. within five minutes it was written uh, and that's, we've, we've done it quite a lot. Yeah, we, we, we did, did that a lot. We did fall asleep right, didn't we? Yeah, but Pete, Pete yeah. and Rob would be hard at it, working away on, on, on the guitars and stuff, and then I'd hear one little one little lick of what Rob mm. or Pete does, and then just take myself off into the Remy's corner. Remy's remember just playing that riff, and you went, oh, yeah. the song came out just that little chord. Yeah, it's, it's really just a little vibe mm. you get, and then from the vibe it grows. And occasionally, right, before mobile phones, he used to call my house and be He's listen, record this somehow. <laughs> yeah. and he didn't realise I was speaking to my mum. Yeah. Paul, stop that. Why are you speaking to me? My mum's my mum's Greek, not Scottish, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Pete's accent's are as nearly as bad as yours, Pam. You do that quite a bit. From, you know, I've got these lyrics. Yeah. Just, can you yeah. write something? Actually, I remember once you called me up, and I'm I'm playing guitar. He's on the phone. He's on the phone singing, and I'm playing guitar on the other end of the line. And, We've got this phone and we're trying to write this song. I can't even remember which one it was. Yeah. I think it might have been Fallen Angels, I can't remember. But And that's where it took us. Are you yeah, a version is saved. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, used to, I used to hide under the desk at work to actually get a rhythm, to get this a thing. And you used to, oh, yeah, I remember that now. I used to get under the desk at work and then call Pete. I'm like, Pete, Pete, I've got this, I've got this idea for a song. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Under the desk at work. So you were hiding from your boss while you were doing that? Yeah, yeah. Just so my colleagues didn't think. <laughs> Did you ever get busted? <laughs> yes, yeah, a lot. They'd be like, what are you doing? Oh, you're singing. All right, sing, sing it to yourself under the desk yeah. again. Okay. Yeah. I, I bet they thought that was rather normal, huh? Yeah. <laughs> After a while, it did become that. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. Now, also, I read, of course, that um, you guys, you know, went to a lot of concerts, but that Paul and Peter went to Bon Jovi concerts wearing glittery wigs, and I, I couldn't help but burst out laughing. I can just picture that in my head. But wh- what in the world gave you that idea? I mean, weren't you, like, supposed to be at a Twisted Sister concert instead of Bon Jovi? <laughs> well, you know, the funny thing, right, with that concert, his one was gold and mine was silver. And we had school the next day. And because we sweated so much, all the gold stained his forehead. <laughs> so he, he had to come into school with gold forehead. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. Dreams of sweat of gold down my face yeah. and trying to explain oh. it one way. I don't know why. We thought, we thought that everyone would have them there. And we, we were the only two. Yeah. <laughs> so so we, we wanted to find decent wigs, but ended up with glitter. But it was, uh, I was, oh, I went, we, we went, is. yeah, we went to so many, so many of those concerts were brilliant, fantastic. Uh, I think one of them we were a bit badly bumped off of school with it to Guns N' Roses. Yeah. I remember when we were really young at Wembley. Yeah. But that was an experience. Yeah. <laughs> But hey, but, but yeah. stay in school, really. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> this is there. an advert from your yeah, yeah. education <laughs> services. Actually, never turned up, did it? <laughs> yeah. I, I uh, have a feeling that you guys were brought into the principal's office quite often. Oh, um, I was trying to get over that, actually. Um, <laughs> 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 So, yeah, I, I, I did used to get away with it a lot of that, didn't I? Yeah, he, had, he kind of had this a way lot. of talking his way out of it. I don't know how it worked. So, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Probably blame the rest of us. That's why we, we stayed behind. The <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, you're so bad, Paul. So, Pam, you have a lovely voice. Um, how long have you been doing radio for? Um, About four years now, I believe. Four years. Fantastic. It's just really good. We're doing a great show. And... Uh, I, I think um, I think it's about. To, are we going to play a song soon? Sure. Um, I was going to wait a little bit later um, into okay. this uh, after a few more questions. Um, yeah. 
Let's see. Let me go ahead and play Breathe right now for our listeners, and then you can tell us about that song. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Okay. Hold on. I 
Det er svært. Sådan er det ikke. Og det er den der. Why did, why did, actually, I do remember writing a song on the toilet called Why Did It Happen? <laughs> <laughs> I do, seriously. What were you doing in the toilet? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you were on the phone too. Problem. <laughs> You're making it worse. Pete was, Pete was in my carriage with... Yeah. Uh, I wasn't Lauren. in the toilet. Yeah. No. <laughs> why did it happen? Do you remember? Yeah, I remember the tune. Yeah. yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. So there's quite a few of <laughs> 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 yeah. oh, the, the so how book. many songs are going to be on the album? Um, well, well, when we release it, we're, we're contemplating at the moment. Um, yeah. we're, we're stuck for which songs to put on yeah, there. So, so many, well, a few too many, and there's a couple that we're thinking we don't know which one of the two to go Ooh. with, and you know maybe I don't know. Which version is here? Make the two hundred. Yeah. Maybe you know maybe we just need a bit of help for some people to listen to it and say yeah, you know which one of these two should we put on the album? We don't know. We don't know what to do with a couple of them. We're really happy with it, but. It's just those finishing touches yeah. until we feel like. If, yeah. if Pam, if we get stuck on a couple, would, would would it be rude to ask you if you wouldn't mind doing a kind of like a call-in thing where you could get people who listen to it to choose? Good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I could probably do that. I want you know, I do music Mondays and I play different songs from the indie bands around the world for an hour. Um, you know, maybe. I can do that and see if people will call in. The only problem is I do it at 2 o'clock in the afternoon central time, and so a lot of people listen to the show after they get off work. Right. So if right. if anybody were to call in, it would probably be people from the U.K. and Europe, you know, that are on a later time zone. So, but, you know, I could try it. <laughs> That's all I could do. Or, or maybe, maybe we'll just get your opinion, because we, we, uh, yeah. we have about, about 10 songs um, that we that we want to release on the album at the moment, but we've got we've got so many more written and recorded. Um, so we're just trying to make it blend so it goes nicely because you don't want too many of the same um, sort of uh, vibe. Um, mm-hmm. But you, at the same time, you know, you've, you, we, we want our best stuff on there. So and we've also got favourites as well. Yeah. So instead of us arguing, we'll let someone else design. What's your fa- <laughs> What's your favourite piece? Well, uh, you know what? There's there's one. Remington sticks out and Fallen Angels are, are mine too but also and also you know you convinced me of this because you used to harp on about it stand up yeah stand mm. up that's, that's that's a big you fell asleep yeah. you were writing that member yeah I uh, so <laughs> remember that well uh, and we, we done it in a little four track that was so ancient yeah remember yeah. Go on, Nick, tell, tell the story. See, Rob, you can Rob, see the problem where we get. We start, yeah. we start listing all ten and then we can't decide. We've done, we done this version of uh, 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 stand up and remember you done a vocal on it in a little cassette yeah. and maybe come out and do it again we couldn't get that right remember we mm. spent days and days and days trying to get the vocal the way you'd done it on this little floor track you know? yeah it was I, well, I was so knackered because yeah. I used to I was so tired I used to go to Rob still about one two o'clock in the morning after being at work all day mm. and uh, Rob had written this lovely little um, uh, ditty and um, just he had this flat microphone to the floor yeah a PZM or something. PZM, yeah. And I was so tired, I was actually leaning over it, just literally on, on like in a baby kind of all fours kind of way, and just come up with the stand up lyrics and, and the melody. Ooh. But the voice was doing a particular thing because I was it's so really tired, crazy, it? and and it, and it sounded really good. And we just could not get that again for no, weeks. Never. I think months. I was like, what did I do? But. Um, <laughs> Down and see if you could get it doing it that way. Yeah, yeah, we all different angles. We <laughs> <laughs> even in the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. oh. Back to the toilet. If we if we <laughs> doubt, <laughs> if we doubt, go to the loo. Yeah. Um, but we uh, yeah, but that was actually. What about Rob? What's your favourite track? Uh, still the same. Still the same. Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, different. Yeah. yeah. It changes every week. Yeah, mine does as well. My mine's mine's hands. I think hands will stand up. Mm. But breathe is really nice. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. It depends on the mood, you know. Sometimes I just love Fallen Angels, just hits it hard, and good rock tune, and just politician, yeah. another one. That yeah, I like. that's really nice. Yeah, that, that kind well, of the way I look at music, the way you know what I pick to listen to at whatever time I'm going to listen to it is whatever mood I'm in. So that's probably why you know some of them are your favorite one week, and then another one, you know, the following week because you're in a different yeah. mood. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. definitely. I think that's, that's mm. true. And also when you haven't heard it for a while as well, because we have, uh, yeah. we have played, played and rewritten yeah. and all that. So, uh, 
Um, what, what can I ask? What, what sort of bands do you listen to? Well, I listen to pretty much anything, but I'm a rocker at heart. So, you know, Bon Jovi's right up there in the, the number yeah. ones with me. And uh, a lot of the 70s music and 80s music, the big hair band, you know, guys, I, I love those. And um, pop music. But rock is my heart. That's just it. That's I grew up with that. That's what stuck with me. And that's my base to work around to what I'm going to listen to next. Wow. Any favorite acts that you've you've seen live that, you know, really blew you away? Oh, my gosh. I've seen so many bands. Um, well, Bon Jovi, of course, because I love them so much. Um, and their fans are just so into them, and they know all the lyrics to all the songs, and, you know, they really get them going. And then... Um, we just have- from oh, back in the day, from back in the day, <laughs> I have to say, like, Blue Oyster Cult uh, was a phenomenal wow. show. They did a lot of laser and stuff like that in it. And uh, Journey, oh, my God, Journey, with Steve yeah, Perry. Yeah. Nobody else, just Steve Perry, okay, mind you. <laughs> yeah, that new is amazing as well, isn't it? Steve Filipino, it's right, isn't it? awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, the other guys that have replaced him, they've been good too, but there's nobody like Steve Perry. I'll agree with you there, definitely. (laughs) No, it's just true. Do you know know Peter has opened the door to Bon Jovi before, to John Bon Jovi and to Richie Sambora? Oh, yeah. He opened the door? Yep. We were were in the same bar, and, uh, you know, instead of saying nice to meet you, I just thought I'd open the door (laughs) because I was like, Oh, hi guys. <laughs> you know, I just but I got stuck for words. So yeah. We'd we'd just been to see Bruce Springsteen at High Park and um we were walking back, we were all buzzing. Actually I we I bumped into you, didn't I? Yeah. I bumped out of all the people, like how many people in High Park? Ten thousand people? Yeah. So um I knew Pete was there but I basically there was no signal and I didn't know where he was standing and the gig had finished, he was uh, with his um uh, friend and um we were walking back out of Hyde Park and all of a sudden I was walking alongside you yeah, and, <laughs> yeah, of all those people I was like oh there and, you are and I needed to go to the toilet didn't I I'll go to the toilet the toilet comes in yeah, here and, oh my and, god and, 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 and really nice hotel called Claridge's and uh, then I met the um, guitarist from um, the Bruce Springsteen band from the East Street band and we were just uh, chatting in the toilet as you did and then I called yeah. Paul from outside like get in here man there's a real good party going on <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, it was Steve, well, Steve Van Zandt, and yeah. then there was Max Weinberg, the drummer, as well. Yeah. Um, and then and we, Bruce, were, we were chatting to them. That's it, and Brucey walked in, and um, yeah, the, the, body, big, the bodyguard pushed me out of the way. Yeah. I was, the, <laughs> Clarence, the big man, was right next to him as well. We're like, wow, cool. And then Bon Jovi walked in, and we're thinking, this is going to be a really good party. We want to go to this, but we got to hold the door open while they went and pied. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, yeah, After they, all they, that. <laughs> Well, you know, I went to a concert one time, and it was with two of my friends, and it was a very, very small venue, and Frankie Valley and the Four Seasons were playing. And so after the concert was over, we stuck around, and we talked to the, the roadies that were there. And then they invited us to come back to the party, the private party. So we partied with them, but then we left there and we went to a bar. And who walks in but Cheap Trick? So that was a good night. Wow, what a night! (laughs) It's brilliant. Yeah, that was. It was a great night, and they gave us tickets to come back the next day, so it was even better. Oh, that is some stuff. Didn't you meet? You know, it's a lot of fun when you get to meet people that you love and adore their music and and that you're a huge fan of. But um, it is hard to speak with them. Because you're you're at a loss of words. You have so much you want to say, but nothing's coming out except for. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> I am. I, I met um, Keith Urban um, when we were recording, and um, he was at the Metropolis Studios and Nicole Kidman as well. And I was at the bottom of this stairwell, and they were at the top. They were just looking to come down, and I was looking to go up. And anyway, Keith was like, he waved me up, and so I went up to the top, and. Uh, he um he was really nice. He's really nice. He was just like, how you doing? You know what you doing? And and we just had a chat, and then we talked about what he was doing. He was in the studio next to me, um that, that we were in. Um, we were just mixing at the time, 
And um, yeah, he was he was a very nice yeah. guy. When it's about a work thing, it's, it's easier to chat because everyone's just normal. But when it's um, Black Eyed Peas are there as well. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, so yeah. Like, we're just talking music. But yeah. when it's outside, I guess everyone's got a, a different persona, and it's, you know, everyone's surrounded by their fans. And uh, yeah. right, right, right. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Definitely. So I think I need to hang out with you guys because you've met quite a few people. <laughs> we've had we've had some luck, yeah. some real luck. So yeah, yeah. yeah well, also with breathe, um, you gave the CD that I guess there was two other songs on there to Lannis Morissette's mom and aunt uh, to Dwayne the Rock Johnson, Russell Brand. I mean, come on, you guys are yeah. getting around. <laughs> yeah, Russ, uh, when I was, uh, Russell Brand's quite funny because I was in uh, I was at the airport and I was um, I was flying over to LA and um, Russell Brand I didn't realise he was standing behind me and I was on the phone to a, a friend of mine who's a, who was a big fan of Russell Brand and uh, they had a, a toothache and they'd just been to the dentist and they were in absolute agony and uh, upset on the phone going oh I don't know what to do myself I'm in so much pain and. Um, <laughs> Turned around and there was Russell Brand standing behind me. So I just said to him, um, Russell, I said, sorry to interrupt you because he was with someone else. I said, my friends just had their tooth out. Would you mind, would you mind cheering them up? And he said, absolutely, no problem. Took the phone and uh, started this huge scenario that he was making up on the spot. Really funny. And uh, yeah, talked to the talk to him. And then, and then afterwards, he come and join me and sat by the security thing, and we just had a chat and. Yeah, he was really mm. nice. Gave me gave me a CD. He said, "Wish you luck," and and he was uh, went his separate way. But yeah, another yeah, mm. nice guy. I see. Well, yeah, we can. The time. Yeah. Well, I think even the Rock, you know, he came. You saw him. You gave him the CD. The next day, he was playing it in his truck, right? Yeah. The Rock was following me around the gym in. Um, yeah. <laughs> 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 Lifting Paul up. Yeah. He was he was trying to see my uh, my secret skills of uh, why I was in such great shape. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah I him everything you know. Uh, he um yeah he was uh he was in a gym in uh, in Canada Vancouver and um it, it actually I think it was only us two that were on, on this floor and he started working out next to me and I was completely stuck yeah. stuck for words because <laughs> yeah. he's massive and I just didn't know what to say and I thought God I got to speak to him you got to speak to him and I was like no 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 I, I was walk away because he was holding weights that were bigger than me <laughs> uh, in each in each yeah. arm. <laughs> and uh, so I walked away and I went on a, another section and then he came over to that bit and he was working on that. So I thought, oh, you know what I'm just going to say. And I, I just, I think the first thing I said to him was, my, my, my friend's a really massive fan yeah, of yours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's me. Oh. And it was Pete, Pete's a huge fan of The Rock, um, yeah. especially from the wrestling, uh, World Wrestling Federation days. And uh, and I think, what's that film? Uh, Welcome to the Jungle. Yeah, that was yeah. great. So much fun. Uh, Welcome to the Jungle with big, big fans of. So I just I said that, and he was like, "Oh, that's really cool. Thank you very much." And he was like, "What are you doing over here?" So I, I told him that you know, I was trying to push the music and, and do some stuff, and he um, he said, "Oh, okay." He said, "Well, you know, good luck with that." And I said, "Can I give you a CD?" And he um, he said, "Yeah, sure, no problem." And uh, so I rushed down to the locker room, got him a CD, and uh, the next day I came in, and he was just coming down the stairs from the top of the gym, and it was packed, and and he shouted out, he said, "Hey, Richmond." And um, and I looked up and he said, um, I've got your CD in my truck. He was like, brilliant, absolutely brilliant, love it. Um, with Fallen Angels, he said, I've got wow. Fallen Angels. Wow. Mm. So that was um, that was a really that was a really nice um, nice feeling. Mm, but, um, yeah. And uh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, you know, because you hand these things out and you never know who's going to listen to them and who isn't, and you always wonder what they think about it. So at least you got one response, you know, from somebody that you admire. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, he was, he was again, really nice guy, really nice guy, very humble. Um, yeah. And how did you give the CD to Alanis Morissette's mom and aunt? How did you meet them? That, yeah, that was, um, that, that was in Canada. It was uh, Vancouver. Yeah, it was really bizarre. I was, um, I'd... Um, can I say that secret? Can I mention the book, The Secret? Sure. <laughs> yeah. So I'd, I'd read, i read it a few months before, and I was over in Canada, and I, I was, I was on my own, and um, I was just trying to do a bit of punting with the music and stuff, and um, and uh, Alanis Morissette, I'm a big fan of, and she was performing at one of their local um, uh, theatres, and I thought I'll get two, two tickets. And I was like, right, I'm going to really treat myself. I'm going to get two front row tickets, and somehow I'm going to meet someone that's going to help me do, get somewhere or do something. 
And um, anyway, I bought it a week before the concert, and all week I thought, well, I'll meet someone. <laughs> this ticket will go to someone. Something will happen in the universe to make it happen. Anyway, nothing happened at all for the whole week. So I got to the night of the concert, and I was standing outside with these two tickets, and like one of the quite it cost me quite a bit, and I was thinking, well, I've got to get sell one of them in this um, this great big like tout. I do call them touts over there. Touts. Tout, uh, ticket, p- ticket touts who come up and buy and sell tickets outside venues. They're just ticket vendors. Oh, ticket vendors, yeah. Well, he he came up to me. He was massive, and he was like, "What have you got?" And he was really aggressive. And uh, and I said to him, oh, "I've got nothing. I've got nothing for you." And um, he was being all aggressive. Anyway, there was a woman standing outside the venue, and I said to her, um, "I said, are you, are you looking for a ticket?" She said, "Yeah, but I don't really, I don't really have any money on me. I was actually supposed to be on a flight, but the flight got cancelled." And um, I've just shot back to see if they've got any tickets, but it's just, it's sold out. So I said, oh, I said, look, fine. I said, you can you can have this. And uh, I gave the ticket to her, and she said, oh, thank you so much. Um, she said, yeah. She goes, I was dying to uh, see my niece when I found out my flight was cancelled. She goes, I, was, I thought I was going to miss the gig. I was like, your niece? And she said, yeah, yeah, Linus Morissette's my niece. And so I thought, hmm, I'm not sure I quite believe that, but okay. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> We uh, we got inside and we're at the front and then she called uh, called this woman over who just who ran over from he was in the front row and uh, it was Alanis Morissette's mum and uh, yeah she introduced me and I said oh wow I said uh, I said any CD? any any, <laughs> any chance you can give a CD to Alanis Morissette <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and she said yeah of course no problem so um, and uh, yeah I'm still friends with um, the the late her aunt now on uh, on Facebook she's really uh, a really nice lady Michelle Briggs but uh, yeah she um yeah she took the CD and, and gave it to her but I never heard anything back so I guess um, still probably in the same <laughs> in the same theater <laughs> but of all people to meet because you know so many people go to that concert and of all people to meet outside you happen yeah. to meet the aunt so that was fate somehow some way that'll work out for you yeah Absolutely. Now you guys also supported the Grateful Dead. Yes. Yeah. And you know that there's they are huge and there's deadheads all over the world. So how in the world did you guys end up doing that? I mean that is got to be the one of the most exciting things for you guys. Oof. You know what? We're gonna be honest about this. Um we was you know, completely overruled by it when we got there, and we didn't realise how super big it was. Um, which just we only realised that after, and that and that made us even more nervous once the gig was over. Yeah. <laughs> it looked us so well, and uh, you know, it, was, it wasn't it was an intimate gig because it wasn't a big. It was like a a warm up to their like tour mm. kicking off, and their fans. Oh my God, they're amazing. You know, they, 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 you know, sometimes you play a gig like this and people just wait for them, but they all stayed for us as well. And we were like, yeah. Uh, you know, and they're really nice. And considering that we weren't, we, we, our music isn't really anywhere near as, I'd say, as no. good as, as, I mean, it, it's a different style. Yeah, and, and different it wasn't, style. we didn't look like we we belonged there, to be honest. No. Right. We were, <laughs> we, were, we were in Santa Monica and we were busking and handing out CDs and uh, just talking to people, and a guy had got a CD and listened to it and then come back and listened yeah. to us and said, guys, do you want to just do a, like, a half an hour show because we need we need someone to come warm up? And we were like, yeah, sure, okay, no problem. And we didn't know it was them until we actually got there. Yeah. And uh, then we were like, oh, my God, <laughs> what's, what's going yeah. on? <laughs> yeah, it um, and it was, uh, yeah, really, yeah, that, again, they were really cool. They took photos for us and everything. They were, they were nice guys, yeah. Uh, we, we, I'll tell you what, we played an amazing gig that, that yeah. night. We just, I don't know, that, their crowd just took us somewhere. Uh, I don't know what it was. It was really special. Yeah. And we just talked about that for years. I think we looked uh, we looked to be like rabbits caught in the headlights. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and they, they, super, you know, they, they could have thrown yeah. stuff at us, I'm sure. But they, they <laughs> yeah. Up to that. Was an for us, though, but they were like, yeah. They were really, really cool. Really cool. Did you get to sit down with the guys in the band at all and have a chat with them? We, we were not afterwards, but we spoke to them beforehand. And they came up to us and they said, Cole, I really like your stuff. Yeah. Great. You know, well, well done. Looking forward to your show. And it was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> You're looking forward to our show? Um, but we <laughs> 
it was just we were just doing an acoustic and yeah. we were just you know just this is the warm up and it was a small venue as I say it was just for them to I guess I get tuned in and the, connect with the, the crowd the night before I think we played we played the whiskey yeah we played do you know the whiskey in LA yeah yeah we played there the night before that was um, that was cool yeah that was really good actually that was a rush because we we, we just got off the plane I think yeah we just got <laughs> off the plane we went straight to the venue and um, it was packed absolutely packed and we went upstairs, got changed, and we were we were headlining. <laughs> but... Can I just stop you? Yeah, when we got when we get changed, Paul always wanted to put on his lucky pants. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> his thing. Every gig, a fresh yeah. pair of lucky pants. They've got to be fresh. They've got to be fresh. Yeah. <laughs> fresh pants and socks. Sometimes if you get them, they put to get them. Oh yeah. 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 <laughs> they like to ruin them. They like to ruin them for me. But, uh, yeah, we um we just we ran up, got changed, and. Thank God we just we went with the flow and we just we rocked that gig. Yeah, but most people were trying to leave actually as yeah. we were starting because they they were supporting a, a college band that were there yeah. and um, they really had a good good group of uh, supporters and we um and and then literally and when they finished they all went off to party so the place went from pack to yeah. kind of <laughs> it was emptying out really fast. That's it. But we started and, playing and, and we, they started coming back in. Yeah. So we had, like, we, oh my gosh, that's excellent. And that's, that's yeah, we ran downstairs and we we said, please don't leave yet. <laughs> <laughs> I must admit we did. <laughs> please don't, give us one, give us one song, one song, yeah. and if you still don't like us, go. So we uh, we managed to keep a few back, and uh, we got rid of all our CDs that night, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Well, got rid you, of char- you charmed a few people then. Yeah, that was that was funny. <laughs> Well, well, what you guys were nominated for the LA Awards for Best International Performers is that what brought you over to the US? Um, yes, and also we love the US as well. Yeah. So to, to be honest, yeah, we'd we'd, we'd love we'd love to really um, yeah base base ourselves between there here and uh, and and Canada. That's yeah. that, I think that's, that feels like home for some reason. I just got back um, from the US from my honeymoon two days ago, and it was just it was amazing. So you know, it's it's, it's a place that. Yeah. Uh, I think yes, I'm, yes. Congratulations I'm, again, Pete, on your on your marriage. Thank you, thank you, thank you. She's at, she, Chrissy's at home listening. Hey, honey. <laughs> Hi, Chrissy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Craig. Congratulations to your wife as well. <laughs> um, can I say hello to my wife as well? Because otherwise, I'm going to get in trouble. Hello, oh, hello of little... course. <laughs> She's sitting here with us. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably kicking you in the shins. Hey, what am I? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but uh, it was what, what was the what was the question? I've completely off the train of thought. Uh, we were saying about the US. Right. And we we do feel yeah, like about the LA Music Award nomination and that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We um yeah, that was that was great. That was really nice. That was that was um that was that was great. I think the the albums come together and it's got some big tracks mm. on there, and especially you're gonna. I think you're gonna play Fallen Angels. It it just when you hear it, you hear mm. why we want to be in America. I think, and it's why a big I, anthem song. Yeah, yeah, and I guess that's the music we listened to growing up. Yeah, like Brucey, mm. Bon Jovi, and you know Pearl Jam and all these kind of bands, and you know I guess that's what we're writing. Yeah, in that in that fashion. So, I mean, friends of ours who have a similar music, they um, they have positioned themselves and, and located other parts of the world, really, and have got successful. Um, a good band called Livingston, excellent, and friends of ours, they based in Germany, and uh, they're they're really yeah, they're they're really good. But similar to similar vibe, it's a lot more difficult over here um, with this type of music mm-hmm. um, for some reason. We've uh, we're quite orchestrated by the Mr. Cows of the world. Yeah. Um, with what gets played and, and what's going to be mainstream. The X Factor just rules, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it, it's hard. It's hard for any band these days to get on mainstream radio um, unless you know somebody yeah. or signed with a record label. You know that's huge. Um, but then again, in these days, because people like myself can play your music. Without having to go through a label, um, it makes it easier for you guys to get your music out there, too. Um, I have listeners from all around the world, and that way you get it out, especially, too, with social media. You know, you get your music out there with a lot of people that you wouldn't have normally gotten back in the day when social media didn't exist. Absolutely, yeah. 
Yeah, so they have yeah, uh, there, isn't it? yeah, they have less control in in that sense. But um, again, it, it, the market's flooded so much with mm. different the avenues music, of, isn't it, yeah, of, of getting out it's there. Musical overload, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But it's, you know, love it. But she's love good. It. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I'm going to play Fallen Angels when I let you go, but right now I'd like to go ahead and play Needle and have you tell us more about that song because I know it's a very important song. Well, um, yeah, it is. Um, Peter and I, uh, we're in school together, and um, we, um, sorry, one second, sorry. We, um, and we uh, we had a friend, uh, uh, Robert Nash, and he um, he got involved with a bit of a difficult and yeah, bad crowd, basically, and uh, started experimenting with, with different things. And, yeah, and he, he passed away very young, basically, and uh, I think it, it influenced the whole the school, school yeah. and me and Paul. Yeah, and uh, it means a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, and that's that's where Needle came from, you know. That song yeah. you wrote the lyrics and you just had it all there, and we just kind of we all put that together, and it was a uh, part of the healing process. That mm. song, yeah, I think. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. People have different ways of dealing with it, and that's one good way of doing it for you guys, because of course you're you know into music, so that would be a good way of getting that out there. Let me go ahead and play it, and then we'll talk more about it. Okay, thank you. Bye. 
Um, I have to tell you that of the three <laughs> songs, I, yeah, why are you guys you, laughing? <laughs> I don't know what happened there. <laughs> why? What did you? Did it go out on you? No, no, Pam, that that's not needle. <laughs> So well, that's a great, great song. song. Another song called but, Answers. But, but thank you very much for playing that one. Which one is that one? That's called Answers. Well, first, that's the song that I got, though, to play, and I thought that's what it was. Oh, it's, uh, Mel, are, are, is she listening? <laughs> We're yeah. coming around now. Yeah. <laughs> no, bad, we... Uh, bad girl. Bad girl. Bad girl. We um no that that's uh, that's answers but um yeah thank you for playing that but no wow. that wow I I totally apologize but that's the song that came, well I don't know how what happened there so I apologize uh-huh. and I I will definitely play it on another show once I get the uh, MP3 for it yeah no 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 problem at all but um yeah that was one of the songs we weren't sure we were going to put on the album or not because we we really love it. It's um mm. it's a slow one. We've got a few slow ones yeah. on there, but um actually listening to it, I want it to play good. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I enjoyed that. <laughs> Did you like that, Pam? Well, I I vote for that song, even though it's not the right one I played. I vote for the song that I just played to be on the album because it's absolutely beautiful. Um, oh. you your voice radiates such emotion in that song, and I I absolutely love it. Thank you. I, I wasn't sure you knew that song because I know there's a there's a naughty word in there, and I thought, oh, no. Oh. Put it out. <laughs> it's okay. I can play naughty words on the song, on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Since it's an Internet station, um, yeah, you can pretty much say anything and play anything. So we're all good there. So, oh, wow, I just can't believe that I did not play the right song, but that's the song I got. Something got mixed up somewhere. No, no, but I think you just completed our album, so yeah. that was oh. it. <laughs> you know, same to you. Get on the album. Yeah, thank you, Pam. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, Mel, now, as is, well. Is, is Needle going to be released as a single, or will that be on the album as well? Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll let you. We'll let you know. We're not. We're not sure yet. So the uh, okay. needle, needle was penned actually for uh, for a sort of a semi private release. Um, okay. Off, off, away from the album. But um, we've had um, the few people that we played it to have really given us a good response, Ooh. haven't they? So we're still mastering a few other bits and 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 uh, mixing Making a few touches. things. So um, but when we when we sit down and listen to the whole thing, then we'll we'll really make it, make our minds up. Um, but you like so that one's called Answers. Are you referring to that as Needle, or did you mean Answers? As far as putting it on the album. Yeah. Well, yes, I think Answers should be on the album. And when I hear Needle, maybe I'll tell you if that should be on there. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, sometimes that happens. You know, I'll get a song sent to me, and unfortunately, you know, however it was sent to me, they accidentally choose the wrong one, or I, I can't even explain it. Really, hardly anybody ever knows what happens, but it's happened to me once or twice before where I'll play a song and they're like, um, that's not the song. Well, then what song was that? <laughs> so <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. That's all I can do, and I, I'll play it for sure on my next Monday show if you guys still want me to. Oh, oh that would yeah, be, that'd be yeah. great. Yeah, fantastic. That would be really great if you could. That would be nice. Would we be able to speak to you again? I definitely. You guys are welcome back any time. Um, I mean, if you'd like to call in Monday while I'm doing the show um, and going to play that song, you're more than welcome to call in. Oh, that's lovely. It's been, it's been really nice talking to you. I, I, I just wanted to say a big shout to um, to a couple of people. Is that okay? Yes, yes. Yeah. So I'd, I'd say obviously hello to my mum. To my sister, um, to my nephew Thomas, who's in a band as well. He's brilliant. Santa Fe samplers. Yeah. And uh, to a good friend of mine, actually, that was close friends of mine. Mike, Ooh. Darren, and Sonia over in Spain. Mike and Naomi, sorry, Naomi. Um, so we just want to say hi and Christian wow. and Sarah, his daughter, over in Munich. And I'd like to say big thanks to Robert Plant and uh, Rod Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, sorry, and the Rock, Alanis. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget Keith's wife. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry, oh, yeah. Nicole. Sorry about that. <laughs> Keith. 
I get all out. Um, <laughs> and obviously John, John and Bruce. Yeah. Um, uh, but it's, a, it's been been lovely talking to you. Is it? Yes, thank you so much for joining me today, guys. And for our listeners, be sure to follow them on Twitter at Richmond underscore band and their Facebook at facebook.com slash Richmond band. Are you guys getting a website anytime soon? Uh, yes, we are. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll launch that. We're, um, we're working on a few things at the moment. So we're just putting the final touches, but in the next, uh, probably in the next two or three weeks, they'll be up and running with lots of things on there. So we'll, uh, we'll we'll let you know the address, and if that's okay, we'll we'll give that for you to maybe 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 you can announce it when it's when it's all finished. Oh, definitely, definitely, because I like to share that with all the listeners. That way, they know how to find you guys, and of course, your music. So uh, we look forward to your album "Fallen Angels" in 2016, and uh, keep the music coming, guys, because I absolutely love it. Thank oh, you. Thank, thank you very you. much, thank Pam. It's been you. a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You guys enjoy the rest of your evening, and I'm going to go ahead and play Fallen Angels for our listeners. Yeah, lovely. You. Take care. Bye. See you later, Pam. You Bye. too. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs>
and that was Fallen Angels by Richmond Band. I absolutely enjoyed talking with the guys. It was a lot of fun, and they have some great stories to share with us, as well as some awesome music. Don't forget to look for the Fallen Angels, the album, out sometime next year, and we'll update you that with that information when we get it. Um, one of the listeners, and her name is Debbie Prowl, absolutely loves Breathe, so I'm going to go ahead and end the show with that. But join me again next week, Monday, at 3 p.m. Eastern Time for another hour of indie music from around the world. And um, don't forget to follow the guys on Twitter at Richmond underscore band. It's R-I-C-H-M-O-N-D. And like their Facebook page at Facebook.com slash Richmond Band. So go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and play Breathe, and we'll talk to you again soon. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. everybody (laughs) for tuning in and i'll see you again next week bye-bye get connected with take two radio music on facebook or twitter at take two radio music or for email updates on future shows follow at blog talk radio for previous episodes upcoming guests and more visit take two radio music.com